the association has been around for a long time. And, uh, and, and that's unusual in the hospitality and travel industry. There's not many organizations that have, have survived, if you will, um, you know, through all the changes that uh, things that we've witnessed. It's interesting back in 1927, the association started when a number of, of hotel what were was called hotel sales promotion people at the time got together we're talk about we're talking about the ethics of how they were promoting hotels and out of that came the evolution of sales managers and you know through the 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s the organization grew um, of course, the industry is mostly independent hotels at that time and it grew globally um, and and then then franchising came in and marketing came in and then revenue management came in. And, and I think one of the things that's kept the association relevant is our ability to change. Um, you know, it, it, when I started, you know, I hate to admit it, but almost 30 years ago, we didn't even have, a, have a, a website or email, you know, back in 1995. So you think about just what the internet did to the, the hotel and travel industry. And, and then you look at what's changing loyalty programs. And now you look at the mega brands. And today we're talking about AI and how it's going to change uh, uh, what our stakeholders focus on, both from a consumer search perspective, but also how do they find processes and, and do things more efficiently in terms of what they do in sales, marketing, revenue optimization, and uh, distribution. So, so 100 years is going to be a fun milestone. We're going to be celebrating that in a big way in 2027. Our foundation or the philanthropic arm of HSMAI has already started a century campaign to raise capital for you know the future. Uh, but uh, we're excited about 2027 and, and celebrating in a big way in all of our regions around the globe. There's an old adage that's been around forever, and that's think global and act local, right? That's not anything really new, but the reality is those that practice it, I think, are the ones that find success and find relevance. Whether you're a hotel brand, you're a, a technology company trying to grow globally, or you're an association like HSMAI. Uh, and so our regions in Europe, the Middle East, Latin America, Asia Pac, and then here in North America have, have all found success in talking to key stakeholders from hotel brands, management companies, ownership groups, listening and distilling down what their needs are into a strategy for that particular region. And then, of course, we tie it together globally through conferences and membership and things like that that we have in common. But, you know, some people think associations are just have this massive amount of staff, like a corporate headquarters of an association. Most associations don't, right? We're nonprofit. We have a very small staff, but we lean in heavily to volunteer leaders that are on the front lines of what our stakeholders need. And so through different advisory boards, subject matter experts, uh, we're able to, to really listen to their point of view, uh, get behind the scenes of what's keeping them up at night and come up with solutions and best practices that's relevant to them. You know, associations are never going to ha help a company define a specific strategy, but we're going to talk about the pros and cons of doing this versus that, sharing best practices, and everybody learns something from that process. Uh, I, I think the most exciting change we've had recently in terms of our volunteer structure is we've introduced what we call rising leader councils. So this is that under 30 demographic that's so important to everybody in the industry today to make sure you understand who they are, how their point of view is different, and how they feel about working in travel and hospitality. And, and I think we've all learned from listening to the points of view of these rising leaders you know, how they see sales, how they see marketing, how they see uh, revenue optimization, how they see distribution. And that's helped our regular advisory boards by listening to these, you know, under 30 demographics. And it's also created a, a sub community just for that G, that age demographic where they can share in, in a safe space their challenges and hurdles or where do they think they found a glass ceiling or what, where do they how do they deal with this issue or that issue? Um, so I think that that's been exciting. So that's another whole dimension of our volunteer structure that's added breadth and depth to what we do. Our core mission is how to how to grow the business at hotels through sales, marketing, and revenue optimization. Right, that's our core mission. Uh, and so while we certainly advocate for 
uh, all the commercial functions and the interdependency they have with each other, we still break down each bucket because you have to respect the science of selling, right? And the science of marketing and the science of revenue optimization. And so that's how our advisory boards are structured in each region around the globe. But I can tell you things like, for example, the sales advisory board. I mean, just how selling has changed through omni-channel selling and how they're measuring attribution and changes in B2B sales. These are things keeping them up at night, as well as AI and tech, uh, customer demands, how, how commercial strategy is impacting their their need to interact with the other other commercial disciplines, um, the, the economics of selling, how there's much more focus on ROI now than there was maybe five or 10 years ago. Um, you know, one of the common denominators between all of the disciplines we're seeing is AI and not surprisingly talent, which is another one. You know, our marketing advisory board, you know, they continue to monitor the evolution of something you know well, and that's all, all things digital, SEO, how to get more direct bookings to hotels. They're looking at channel optimization, which isn't anything new, but you know that in and of itself is a massive science these days. Um, you know, A lot of digital marketers invented the whole uh, concept of, of ROI, but, but now they're changing the narrative from the return on ad spend to, to other aspects of, a, of, of ROI. Um, they're also looking at the rising acquisition costs and budgetary constraints of that. Not, not surprised for anybody in the hotel industry that middle of the P&L, if you will, for the average hotel has become a huge pain point for a lot of owners today. Uh, so everybody's looking at all those types of things. You know, marketing folks are also looking at, at um, you know, regulations around customer data, data privacy, um, you know, dealing with you know, the, the, the issues of managing all the different brands, uh, dealing with the swings in customer demand, cultivating loyalty, you know, all those things fall into the marketing bucket. And the third and final major bucket that we focus on is revenue. And, and there, um, certainly total revenue optimization is something revenue leaders have been talking about for a long time, but there's probably never been more focus on ancillary uh, and, and total revenue optimization than there is right now. But you know, revenue is now has a seat at the table, right? So they're learning across the other disciplines of sales and marketing. Um, they're dealing also with AI, with with talent, um, owners, uh, particularly um, management companies dealing and brands dealing with multiple asset managers to make sure they're aligning with what that owner expectations are. Um, and then they've got to deal with the day-to-day -day issues, whether it's demand recovery, alternative lodging competition, consumer behavior the fractured state of distribution. I mean, I go on and on. I mean, there's a long list of issues that each of these groups of subject matter experts are monitoring for us. And, and that's where content generation comes from the association perspective, because these advisory boards are constantly sharing points of view that we publish and, you know, and, and helping design educational programs and things that are really relevant for HSMAI. So that's a, that's a long way to answer, but it's a big question because each yeah. one of those has its own set of unique challenges and issues they're trying to, to stay focused on. We have a foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of the association. And our foundation's mission is all about how do we attract, develop, and engage talent. Very simple. So we look at those three pillars of how do we, we build that pipeline, develop the pipeline, engage people currently in sales, marketing, and revenue you know, positions currently. Um, and so that's that's really a fun group of very passionate people around talent where the association is really the educational arm. That's what core associations do that are professional societies like us. But but the, the foundation has a number of initiatives that, that they do ranging from some, some research. We just commissioned an exciting project on, on AI and the impact it's gonna have on, on talent in the future on how do you source, recruit talent, and those types of things. Um, we also work with a lot of the hospitality schools globally. We've identified faculty that teach a sales, marketing, or revenue class in these schools because we really want them to be our ambassadors. Uh, we have, we have uh, scholarships and grants that identify students, that give them a mentorship. Uh, but one of the signature items that the foundation produces every year is an annual state of talent. Um, and, and that's really unique. That's never been done before in our swim lane of sales, marketing, and revenue optimization. And, and this year's State of Talent report identified kind of nine major mega themes 
Um, and then we refresh these themes every year in, in the, the new state of talent report. But the 2024 report talked about the trends we're seeing that are really impacting our stakeholders. So whether it's the changing needs in the multi-generational workforce, it's the how the gig economy and fractional staffing models are, are being used now in sales, marketing, and revenue, whether it's retention strategies and how they need to really be beefed up across hotel companies to be inclusive of upskilling and reskilling and having upward mobility. Uh, transferring employee engagement, transforming employee engagement was another theme this year. Uh, we talked about leadership and culture is another theme. Um, the whole return to office and hybrid work models was a theme that we sp talked a lot about last year. That's becoming more stabilized this year. Um, you know, another trend that that has been profiled in this year's State of Talent report was, you know, cross-functional teamwork and the evolution of commercial uh, we talked about the rise of artificial intelligence. And one theme that's been high on a lot of people's minds is prioritizing emotional wellness. And I think this really came to the surface uh, of the industry, particularly after the pandemic, because uh, people were in a different state of mind. And how do you get back into the work mode uh, or, or try new things to balance you know, your personal and your work life? And so what companies are doing to address wellness for a lot of their associates is it's a whole new trend of things that we're seeing companies do. So the State of Talent Report is designed to be a thought leadership piece that the foundation board of directors really has a personal vested interest in. They all help give input and shape the themes at every year's annual report, um, and then we'll publish it every January. So um, th this year was the third year we've done that. Um, and uh, Looking forward to creating conversation and identifying case studies and best practices that all companies can walk away from that report with a checklist of a few things they can ask themselves or they can do in each of those those areas, particularly if they think that's that's a theme that's really impacting their company's productivity or their their acquisition strategies or their retention strategies or whatever it may be.